So this is the Commodore 64C that I took out the RF modulator and removed one of the inductors to try and get better video output. So I thought, why don't I get one of these little C64 RF modulator replacement boards as a kit, build it up, and then see if that gives me any better output than the stock RF modulator with the inductor removed. So I've done that, I've built up this little thing, the unpopulated parts here are ones that you only need for the Breadbin 64, which this isn't, so uh, there's a voltage regulator and a few other parts that just aren't necessary if you're not using it on that board. And I'll put that link to this um, board in the description. The good thing about this is it's got these two little trimmer pots in. So before I was putting a resistor inside the cable, but I've taken that out now and I've just got access to these two trimmer pots, which I've already trimmed. So because I've got it plugged in with these little fly leads here, I can just swap between these two modulators dead easy uh, and we can have a look at the difference. Spoiler alert, there isn't any. <laughs> so, so either the output's as good as you're gonna get on a C64C or this, you know, just I haven't adjusted this right or something, but the output between this and this is basically identical and I can show you that now. So what you're looking at now is the modulator with the inductor removed. So this is the stock modulator, but I've removed, so I've removed the inductor at L1. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. If you actually go to the main screen and just like change the colors like I was doing before, it still just looks as bad as before and I'm getting the checkerboard patterns, which I can't seem to get rid of, but it's the same on both either way, but they both don't have the um, resistor in the cable now. So I've just removed that. So the output, I think, for games actually looks okay. And this is, again, this is the stock modulator. So it doesn't look the worst thing in the world. So let me just quickly swap this over. And this is the good thing about having these leads. is I can just take that out and I can swap it over to this um, modulator replacement. And it's pretty much the same, to be honest. If there, there is a little bit of interference on the screen, but that's actually this um, this SCART box that I've got. It's not actually, whoops. It's not actually coming from the C64. So what I think I'll do is I'll put this RF modulator with the L1 inductor removed. I'll put this back into the C64 and I will use this one on the Breadbin C64 that I've got, because the output from that is particularly bad. And uh, that'll mean I'll just have to quickly populate the rest of the parts on here, because I will need the, I think there's four or five more parts that go on here that are only required for the Breadbin. There's a voltage regulator and a couple of caps. So I'll populate the rest of this, and uh, this one can just stay in here because actually the output isn't that bad. Uh, the other thing that's weird here, um, I did a previous video where the back bit didn't work on this particular computer and I couldn't figure out why um, it was causing a garbage screen when it booted and the only thing I've actually changed is I have removed this modulator and now the back bit works um, so I have no idea what that's all about to be honest and now when I boot it it's absolutely fine and even when I put the stock modulator back it, it's still the same it still works so I think I'll just put this back together now and I'll, I'll put this back into the C64 so the first job is just to desolder these pin headers that I put on here. I'm gonna do that with some solder wick because my my desoldering station is blocked. Let's see if I can get these off with some solder wick. There we go, that's, ah, that's one of them out, that's hot. Not run out of solder wick in the process. Let's see if we can get some more of the solder out of those holes now. Yeah, there's just too much solder in those holes. Getting these things back in is not that easy. Right, that left side's going in. Why is the right side not going in? Still another hole filled with solder. So I've just got this massive ground hole that's got the solder in and I just can't get it out, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to fix my desoldering pump. So I can't put the old modulator back because of the, that one of those holes is full of solder. Okay, so at great expense to my mental health, I have managed to unblock my desoldering pump or desoldering station. So hopefully, should make this a lot easier. Oh, I still didn't get it. That is unbelievable. Might have to go for more heat.
Oh, we got it. Finally. It's just taken ages. That did not want to cooperate. And hopefully this now fits in. Is that the only thing stopping it? It was. Whew. Finally, I can put this back together. Yeah, that sits on the bottom. I can put the top on back on later. I can finally resolder this thing back in. And I haven't soldered these tabs back in yet, but let's just see how we got on with the modulator. Not easy to get out, and turns out not easy to get back in either. And moment of truth then. Oh, I've got no back bit cartridge plugged in. Well, the computer still works. That's a good sign. Have we got any audio or anything? Here we go, so loading some creatures. Excellent, so this computer is just back to the way it was, except the L1 um, inductor has been taken out of this RF modulator. I'll put the cap back on later. So the only thing left to do now is to get this, which is the RF modulator replacement, the modern one. I'll just fill in the rest of the parts, uh, and then in another video, I'll test this on the bread bin C64 to see if that can actually improve it. But yeah, this thing's actually quite good, but um, for the C64C it hasn't really improved it, but if your modulator is broken, I'd recommend building one of these. It's quite good, I think. Because uh, I bought it off an eBay seller, he'd actually just sellotaped all the parts on the board onto this piece of paper and given it to me, which is actually quite a good idea, and you just pick out the thing, put it on. Uh, but when I looked at the instructions, these parts weren't required because they were only for the bread bin. So I decided just to omit them. So now I'm gonna put these on because this is probably gonna be used on a bread bin C64. So I'll just quickly populate these parts if I can get them right. Okay, so that's that little RF board fully populated now and ready for the long board. I think when you put in a long board, you have to just move all these jumpers over into the higher position, but I think they're all stuck down with flux at the moment. So I'm gonna go clean this board off and then I'll replace these jumpers. So next video, I will try out this in the bread bin C64 and see how much better that is. Cause the video output on that was actually pretty crappy, but the C64 is actually, C64C is actually doing really well without it. Excellent, it's a neat little board this. It's very, very tiny. And I think quite a good replacement for some of these modulators maybe. I'll stick this in a bread bin in another video.